I'm Brett Maitam of brett.maitam.net. In this level 200 screencast, we're going to look at some object oriented programming principles around classes and objects. The objective we'll look at object oriented programming principles, look into classes, properties, and methods. So, what is object oriented programming? OOP or OOP is a programming technique and software design philosophy which allows you to create and model objects instead of actions. Objects are self-sustainable things that define the data and the actions that act on the data. Unlike procedural programming, data is not global and shared with the rest of the application. Programs are actually seen as the interactions between objects. Object-oriented programming has a strong drive to reusable objects with the reuse of code. So, what is a class? A class is a short for classification. It basically describes a thing or is a blueprint for something. It is a noun. A class has properties or otherwise known as attributes and methods or procedures. In the screencast, I'm going to focus on the conceptual principle rather than the implementation. So, let's look at an example of a class. So, let's look at a person, for example. The term person doesn't refer to anyone in particular, but we all understand what a person is, or we can describe a person. In object-oriented terms, we create a class defining a person. That person then has certain characteristics that we can describe a person. For example, a person has a name, a gender, an age, a hair color, and a weight. I'm sure you can think of a lot more. These are what we call properties. A property is basically the data that describes a person. The next is the methods. In object-oriented terms, methods are actions we'd like to perform in that data. For example, in a program, we might have a draw method, which actually renders the model on the screen. We might have a walk method that animates that person, and a dance method, which allows that object to dance. Thus, methods act on data. Let's look at some real-world examples. We might be looking at writing a contact into our application. A contact may have a name, a company name, and their telephone number. We might have an update method to persist this information to a database or to disk, or a dial method to actually call that number. We might be writing a human resource system and define an employee, the employee's name, their manager, their salary scale. We might have methods for example, to hire, fire, or for that employee to take leave. We could also be looking at potentially, let's say, a game where we have a player. The player has a name, a score, their current health. We might implement some actions that can control the character, such as jump, shoot, move. We might be in financial services and define an equity with a name, a share code, the last bid price, and the last offer price. We might actually make offers to make a bid or to sell the equity. We might be writing a financial application with an invoice with the customer's name, the date of the invoice, the shipping address. Then we may have some methods to calculate the tax, the totals and potentially persist the invoice to disk. We could be doing some UI design and create a button with a width and a height and the text to display on the button. We might have a method in there to handle when the user clicks the button. Let's do a quick lab. In this lab, I'd like you to think of some classes. Describe some of the objects around you or that you'd be interested in writing. Do they have properties? What actions could you perform on those objects? If you're a bit stuck, look at things around you. Can you describe them? Can you describe some actions on them? Pause this video for a few minutes and when ready, resume.
Let's look at classes and objects. A class is a template or blueprint that defines something. In our example here, we have a person. It's not a real person. It's just a conceptual idea of a person. This class also defines data and properties. However, we can go and create an instance of that class and a real value of the class. We can create a girl object class, which is a person, and set the properties. The name, the gender, the age, the hair color, and the weight. We can then start executing the methods to draw, walk, and dance. A class, being a template, can then be used to create multiple objects. For example, we can create a boy object, which is also a person, with a name, gender, age, hair, and weight. We can also then execute the methods of draw, walk, and dance. So, a class defines the conceptual idea of something. Then, an object is an actual implementation with data of that class. I'm now going to do a screencast demonstration explaining objects. The first thing is we need to instantiate a new person. So we'll create a new variable called boy object and set that to a new person. In setting that person from a code side, we'll set the name to Brian, gender to male, blonde hair, age 7. When that code is actually executed, in memory, an object is created with the properties set. The next is to actually call a method. On the boy object now, we'll call the draw method. When executed, the data is used and the object then is drawn on screen. We can then set the age property. So on the boy object, we'll set the age. Boy object dot age is equal to 13. When executed, the object in memory's age changes to 13 and the image on screen changes accordingly. One can set multiple properties once the object exists. In this case, we'll now change another property and set the hair color to brown. Notice when it's executed, the boy's hair color changes to brown. Also, the hair property shows brown. Finally, again, set another property, set the age, and execute it. The age changes and the screen updates. Being object-oriented programming, we can create multiple instances of the same object. So let's instantiate another person. This time we're going to create a girl object. So we'll create a variable for girl object, called girl object, and then set it to a new person. Setting her name to Nikki, gender female, hair color brown, age 7. We'll also then execute the draw method. What happens in memory, we now have a boy object and the new girl object in memory with the properties set. Draw being called, the image is rendered. We now can then set the properties. For example, girl object dot age equals 22. When executed, the girl updates. Our program now has two objects, a girl object and a boy object. They are independent. Should we, for example, set the boy's weight to give him a bit of a beer tummy, it will only affect the boy object and not the girl object. So, setting the boy object's weight to beer gut and executing it changes only that object. Next is to actually execute a method. We're going to execute the dance method on the girl object. When this is executed, the animation starts playing. So, the big question is, can Brian dance? Boy object dot dance. Yes, Brian shares the same dance code. The objects are different, but the dance code can be applied and executed on either object. In review, object-oriented programming is a programming technique. A class is a blueprint describing an object. A class describes the data, known as the properties, and the actions, known as the methods. Objects are actually instances of a class. One can create multiple instances of the class. 
Object-oriented programming focuses on reuse of code.